I just saw. Uh, I'm sorry. What'd you say? I watched a little bit of your interview with the, uh, Ian Anderson. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It was pretty cool yeah. talking to him. You know, it was yeah, yeah, man. You know, it's funny when I was a kid when I lived in Brazil back when I when I when I formed Sepultura. Uh, I was walking to practice one day, and there was a huge pile of of, uh, of garbage on the street, and Aqualung was there on the, on a the pile, and I I picked it up and I took it home. <laughs> and, uh, is that how you first got into hearing it? Was that the first time then? Yeah, yeah. So I got that record when I took it home and I listened. I was like, it was cool. This, this stuff is it's crazy, you know. But uh it's it's funny because it was like somebody threw it away and I was like, I just happened to find it. Uh, um same with a lot of my my uh, my dad had a big collection of, of, of old uh, Italian records, but on his collection I found Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. Oh, that's and cool. I never knew my dad was a rocker, man. It was a big he he died, he passed away, but it was a big surprise. Like, my dad was a rock and roller, and I, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely got to be cool, man, finding out that he was into the, some of the heavier stuff there. Which yeah. you, know it, you know, Maybe it was just curiosity, because he was into opera, uh, mostly Italian opera and stuff, you know. But uh, definitely, he had he had Black Sabbath 1 and Led Zeppelin 4. Um, I wish I still had those records, man. I end up trading them to get tattoos or something. I don't know. <laughs> I sold I sold my whole kids collection to get a a, a, a a dragon tattoo. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty Dude. cool. I mean, at least you got a story to tell out of it, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I did that, and the other thing that I did that was kind of crazy. Was I had an uncle that wanted to meet me to go on a on a straight and narrow, so I was letting my hair grow, and he's like, "If you cut your hair, I'll buy you an imported record, whatever you want." And so I pick ride the lightning, you know, and I, you know, cut my hair, got me a bus, a, a bus cut, military bus cut, but I got ride the lightning. <laughs> That's it, man, you know, yeah. you know, what's so, what's so cool about that is with all those albums and stuff like that, you got a memory to go with it. So whenever you hear that, you'll think of, you know, the buzz cut, or you'll think of the tattoo that you got when you hear your kiss and stuff like that. For sure, man. And it, and it, the craziest thing, it's even cooler we, I was touring with Soulfly, and a fan heard that story and gave me a whole collection of vinyl of Kiss. Oh, wow. How cool is that, right? That's real cool, for sure. I was like, really? Like, yeah, I bought it for you, man. It's, it's, it's got the whole Kiss. So I, I actually got the collection back all those years later. <laughs> That's awesome. That's man. Man. cool. It's, fans do cool stuff, man. You know, they really... Uh, surprise you a lot of times they do they do amazing stuff like that well you know what it is i mean you do so much for these fans i mean you may not realize it when you write your lyrics but sometimes people relate with that music so much that they always want to get an opportunity to go ahead and say hey thank you and they do cool stuff yeah exactly and 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 i i really appreciate that and i think um i think connecting with the fans has always been part of what i do from the beginning you know we always were uh connected uh with the fans and now i do some other so much other stuff like i do a lot of cameos and stuff like that um and i, I think it's it's cool it's it's like you get to give them something that's very special very unique because because when i first heard of cameos i wasn't so sure i was a little bit like oh this stuff is this thing is a little bit cheesy i don't know if i should do this uh i wasn't in i wasn't sure um uh, but then I did a couple and some people sent me the reaction video, people reacting to the video. It's like, there's a guy, he's like crying, man. He's like shaking, crying. He's so freaking happy that he got it, you know? Um, and, and that's just cool, man. I, I love being able to bring people joy in their life through that kind of stuff. Uh, Cause a lot of times we, we just write the music and it's out of our hands, you know? Right. We are not there at the moment that the kid is in the bedroom listening to that album and is making that connection. We're never there. We're always somewhere else, you know. Um, but the connection exists and it's really powerful, man. You know, it's cool. Just like you know, the stuff you have on your wall, like that's cool. I love that, man. I love that that um, you know, putting your 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 heroes on your wall and you look up to them and uh, you you feel connected to them. It's great, you know. I took all these. That's amazing, man. That's Thanks, cool. Man. Really it. cool. 
Now, you were saying with Cameo, I mean, it's crazy to think how far technology has come. I mean, could you imagine years ago if you had that way of interacting with the bands that you grew up with? I would have lost my mind if I could get if I could get a James Hatfield Cameo when I was 13. Yeah, game over, man. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I would, been, I would have been the happiest kid in the world. Jesus. You know, it's crazy. I mean, I got to meet them afterwards, but that's that not after we gained some success of our own. I'm talking kid, you know. Right, for sure. Talking, yeah, man. I'm talking shithead Max Cavalera, 13 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue about nothing. Just living in a in in, in Brazil, in a, a shitty ass room in Brazil. If that Max could get a cameo, that would have been insane, man. Well, you know, it's very cool that you're able to do that now for these young fans and give them an opportunity to get a message from you, for sure. Yeah, and and I, I, that's the thing that I really put the, the time on it. On it. I do them with my guitar. Um, and so I sing them Brazilian happy birthday. A lot of them are, 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 are birthdays, you know? Mm -hmm. So I sing them birthdays in Portuguese with my Brazilian guitar, and I play a little bit of, of some, some of my best riffs that people love. Uh, so I try to make it as unique and, and as uh, as cool as possible for them to get something uh, that is not just me going, uh, "Hey John, happy birthday!" Bye. You know, it's like it's not just that. <laughs> you gotta you gotta make a you gotta put a little effort in it. That's awesome, man. Especially making it memorable for them, and then for them to go ahead and send you the reaction video has got to be even just as cool. Yeah, you know what's funny? I got a cameo on on uh, on Christmas. Uh, yeah, my wife got me a cameo, uh, and is a, is a Detroit Lions uh, player because I'm a Lions fan, as you can see. Right. Uh, and and uh, and it was like, uh, uh, man, it was it was it was it was really crazy because uh, she, she was she was trying to 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 be cool and like I, I, your presence not here yet because you haven't up uploaded on the phone yet. It's like it's coming, it's coming. It, 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 it's it, it's gonna be here uh, any minute now, and then and if it, 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 it finally finally uh, finally hit it, man, and it was cool. Like got, got to watch the uh, got to watch the message, and uh, uh, it, it was uh, uh, just just I, I felt because I love sports, so I felt the connection uh, between between sports and 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 metal and music. Um, and, and and it was uh it was unique. I didn't expect that it was a nice surprise, you know. That's definitely cool, man. That's awesome. Something that you get to remember forever, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I know you just wrapped up your Soul Flight tour. How are you going to handle the break that you have before you jump back on the road? So yeah, we just kind of like I actually been working. Um I've been uh, I've been writing some new stuff with my son. Um, because I have a I have a bunch of different projects. And one of the projects I have is called Go Ahead and Die. Uh, and it's a very uh, hardcore death metal, you know, just heavy shit. <laughs> and I do that with my son. So I've been actually writing with him right now. Um, we just finished the, the Soul Flight tour. And it was, it was kind of weird. For the first three days, I was road sick. Most people get homesick. I was road sick. I was like, oh, I, I, I need to get back on the road. You know, I was right. like, I was, I was having the shakes and everything. <laughs> was, well, you know, when you haven't been able to play for so long, I bet you you're definitely going to get, you're going to miss it. Oh man. So good. It was so good to be back out there and the shows are all packed. People are really loving it. They're really, really, truly like finally really enjoying themselves again after the yeah, but so so uh, just just uh, just homesick and you know uh, road sick actually. Uh, I do get homesick, but not a lot. I love the road. <laughs> I'm like I'm kind of like like a nomad. You know, you know, I love being in a different city every night. I'm, I'm not one of those guys. After one month, give me another month. Let's go. You know, <laughs> I'm like I'm ready to go, man. Uh, but yeah, I, I came home and for the first two days, I was like. Man, I really miss. I really, I, I have no idea how much I miss this, man. You know, it's like I'm physically hurting. I want to, I want to be out there. I want to, I wanted to, I wanted to tour more. So thank God I'm doing another tour, right, with my brother. So 
that's that's been taking care of it. <laughs> now, how were you able to handle that long hiatus when we had the lockdown? Uh just man, just did try to do a couple things to keep the, you know, as as use the time as the best you can. I end up writing records. So I work on a, I work on a new soul fly. I work on a go ahead and die record. I work on a killer BQ record. Um, go ahead and die and killer BQ both have come out. Soul fly comes out in July. And I did a couple of things. Like uh, I did this thing on Facebook called max tracks. It was just me playing guitar uh, for the fans in my living room. It was really kind of punk rock. No, um, no fancy lights or sound, none of that. I wanted to do absolutely punk rock. Like, like if you came to my house and it was sitting in my living room, me with my guitar, this is what you're going to get. No bullshit, no filter, like straight up. And uh, so I did that for a while. That was really cool. We got about uh, there's, look, there's thousands of people watching live. It was cool. It was free too, you know? That's real cool. Yeah, it was a free thing. We did it. I did a, a maybe for like a year. Um, yeah, apart from that, just that. So it was between that, the cameos, Max Tracks cameos, and recording new music. What kept me kept me sane. Um, and uh, so yeah, so so that was uh, uh, that's what I, I was trying to, to when I was talking about the cameo. I was trying to remember that uh, the Detroit guy that that gave me the the cameo. It's it's, it's actually Golden Tate. Oh yeah, I finally, I finally remember his name, uh, and it was cool because he looked me up, and uh, you can tell he's not a metalhead, so he kind of just goes, "Yeah, man, I check you out. Your your stuff rocks, man." <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was it was really cool to get a cameo from. Uh, I mean, he won a Super Bowl with Seattle, so um, that's pretty sweet. You know, I, I I think he doesn't play anymore. I think he's retired now. Um, but yeah, it's just. Uh, just try to use the, the time as, as best as you can, you know. Um, mostly uh, what I really enjoy at that time was spending a little bit more time at home. So I got to spend more time with a wife. So that was uh, that was really cool. We, we ended up watching a lot of series, a lot of TV together. Um, did a little bit of, 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 of traveling, not much, because on the height of the pandemic, I wasn't going anywhere. I was just staying at home, you know. But a little bit later, I got to, I went to uh, end up, uh, we rent a motorhome and went to Florida, went visit my son in Florida. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, just try to, to, to get, keep as busy as you can. But I'm so glad that touring is back. And um, I'm, I'm sure you are probably happy too. You get to go back and keep shooting those amazing photos there. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it, it was going crazy there for a while, just being locked in. But now, Things are looking good. Everyone's starting to ease up on those mandates and everyone's back out and rock and rolling. And I feel that it's more exciting than now than ever to tour, man. It's crazy because of that, because of that time that we were forced to close shop, you know, everything you, you, you give, you're, you're more appreciated. You know, I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate touring more than I ever did before. Like I never knew how much I actually like touring until now. And I still, I'm really love, love fucking touring and I need it. You know, it's crazy. Oh yeah. I mean, to have something taken away from you. I mean, that was the one thing that could not be replaced. I mean, they started doing movies and letting you watch stuff in the theater at your house. You were doing a lot of online stuff, things like that. But like being in an actual show, man, that, that little bit of release that you get, well, it's amazing that it's back. Yeah, and and the, well, especially the music, right? I think the shows, metal shows, I don't like any other one. Um, so it's a very unique experience, you know. It's very ritualistic, like the Soulfly stuff, this 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 Cavalera stuff that we do is very tribal, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. So so it's cool. It's good to be back. Now I know you had Dino fill it again on this tour. Is there a chance that he might be the permanent replacement? No, I wouldn't say that because I like the idea of having different guys. <clears throat> In fact, uh, <clears throat> I think we're actually thinking of other guys like Dino that would be really cool to bring into the fold. Um, 
And I have not thought about a real actual replacement. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're gonna just we're just gonna keep doing that for the meantime. Um, the the thing with Dino was really cool because we did one tour last year and then we had another tour for it was different cities. So I was like, Dino, come on over again. Let's do this again. You know, he's a, and he's such a good guy. He's just a just a cool guy, a veteran player, knows his thing, he knows his metal, knows his guitar, and uh, so it was it was. Uh, we kind of knew him too, so that made it easier. But I like the, the idea of maybe inviting some other people to be part of this in the future and, and go from there. Hopefully, eventually, we'll, we'll find a guitar player that's going to be, you know, maybe final for a, for a little bit. Uh, but because Soulfly has always been very different anyway, from the beginning, we change members. I think this idea of having a different guitar player for every tour actually for soulfly it works you know it's not it's not so weird for for a band like soulfly actually actually it, it'll be kind of cool. i think the fans would like to see it oh and it you know right now you, you mentioned that the uh, soulfly album is coming out in july is that right i think so i'm not sure <laughs> i think it's july yeah who did you have play guitar on the album then? We're keeping that kind of a secret right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely different uh, different people. Um, and definitely, um, I'm very excited. I don't know the exact date yet. We already played two songs. Right. On the tour, Dino was playing with us. We, we play a song called Field Upon Field. And we play a song called uh, Superstition. Uh, which is not a cover song. It's an original song. Uh, it just has the same name as, as um, the other song, Superstition. But it's an original. We play, it was great. Great uh, reaction from the fans. So I think they're going to dig the new record. Uh, it's just kind of like we're just waiting a little bit to start releasing the songs. I think they're going to start coming now in April. We're gonna start putting them out on Spotify and Apple Music and X Liquid Metal and you know XM radios and all that. Um, but I'm very excited for the record for sure, and I, I hope we get to um, get a good tour out of that when that comes out too, probably in the summer. That's awesome, man! I'm really looking forward to that. Now, is there any chance of you doing Dino Assault and filling in as the singer for Fear Factory for a tour? Oh, come on! <laughs> I, I heard that. I heard people mention that. Uh, but no, I think I think Dino's got a guy already. Uh, I mean, he found a singer and I couldn't really do birds. I can do the, the heavy vocals. Right. Uh, but not the melodic stuff. That's that's a little bit out of my range. <laughs> but uh, but it's uh, it's 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 really cool having Dino with us, man. It's uh, he's he's fun. He's a fun guy. He brings a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom a lot of you know he's got he's got a lot of years in the metal world that he brings that with him and uh, i think fans really really like that they really like to see us with him you know it was like it was like a special treat for the fans that, that they really got to enjoy um but I, like i said i think it'll be cool to do more of that even with other other uh guys i i, I can't think top of my head now who but it would be cool to get guys like Dino from other bands that would like to do the same thing in the future. I think that would have been really cool. Yeah, for sure, man. Fans would definitely get a kick out of it. I mean, for those who got a chance to see Dino with you guys, it's that's so icons together, you know, it's a real, yeah, it was fun. Have. It was fun, man. And, uh, um, he's just a character. We laugh a lot with him. He's funny. He's always in a good mood. <clears throat> he's always in a good mood. He loves touring. Um, and it was just awesome to hear the riffing, man. I, I don't think Soulfly ever sounded that heavy because you mix that Fear Factory heaviness on top of Soulfly. It was like bone crushing, man. <laughs> you know, it was it was pretty sick. Yeah, man. I, I I got to hear some of the live stuff that you guys did. It was awesome. Yeah, it was it was very intense and it sounded just just big. You just like his riffs are huge. His guitar song is guitar sound is huge, um, and the the, the soulfly stuff 
with the chuggings, man. It sound, sounded crazier than normal, which, which was cool. For me, as a fan, and I speak for a lot of the fans, they're fans of both bands, they're fans of Soulfly and they're fans of Fear Factory, was like, yeah, I dig this. This is killer. I get to see two of my favorite guys on the stage together. It was, it was almost like a super group type mentality. Sure. Thing, you know so it was cool i, I like that and now you're gonna jump back on the road uh in may start doing some stuff with your brother you guys are gonna be doing set the terror songs from uh beneath the remains and arise yeah yeah so that's uh that should be cool uh those are i look at those two records are twin they're twin brother records they almost could have come out together at the same time it people wouldn't notice they're so similar they're from an era i think that's a it was a very specific sepultura era between 89 and 92 was like the pinnacle of the death thrash movement you know right um, and we were riding that wave hard you know <laughs> yeah us together we oh gosh entombed and Dark Angel and Possessed and uh, so many great bands at that time, man. It was killer. It was a killer movement. Uh, I remember um, some of the tours that we did back then. The first one was Sepultura, Obituary, and Sadus. It was called SOS. Right. Kind of like save us all, you know, the yeah. SOS. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a, a I love obituary. So and sages, it was cool to see that. Um, it was just a great time in Mattawa that 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 era 89, 91, 92. It was a special magic moment in metal that we get to relieve it doing this tour, you know. And I, I do it. I, I, it's not just to relieve it or pay homage to the past, but also because it's fun. You know, those songs are super fun to play. Um, they take a lot of practice. There's a lot of fucking riffs. Right. It's kind of crazy to relearn all that. Uh, but once you do it, they're just as, as a guitar player. I love playing them. I love it. It's, it's all in a e standard tuning. That's before we start tuning down and fucking with tunings and making different tuning songs. So that's all in E. And a lot of the messages in those records are very relevant right now. If you think about Ukraine and shit like that, those are very anti-war records, especially beneath the remains. It's like, uh, you know, who has won, who has died beneath the remains, asking questions about war, you know? So I think it's, uh, it's crazy that 30 years later, the stuff is more relevant now than even when we first put the shit out. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that song was actually influenced by uh, U2 of all bands. I was inspired by U2's record War. And I was reading a lot of bonus lyrics and had a lot of cool stuff in, in the lyrics about war and stuff like that. So I was really soaking like a sponge, like really influenced by a lot of people don't know, but Beneath the Remains and Arise are, are heavily influenced by U2 lyrically, not musically. Musically, it has nothing to do with U2. <laughs> <laughs> but lyrically, definitely uh, definitely an influence. Uh, and it's cool that it's relevant now, man. You know, we get to go out and sing those songs now. And I think they're going to even have a different feeling when we do them live now than they did 30 years ago. You know, what's cool is that parents are going to be bringing their kids to this and they're going to be thinking, oh, my God, these songs are about what's like you said. They're about what's going on now. They're not going to know that this was done. 30 years oh, old. Yeah, yeah sure. it's crazy. You know, it, it, it's just like when I remember when the pandemic hit and I was I was talking to a friend of mine. I was I, I told you, right. I told you those metal albums were in line. Metal record. <laughs> we're talking about the pandemic before yeah. this shit existed, man. It was like all these like. You know, Napalm Death records and nuclear assault records about the plague and all this shit. It hit. The shit was real. <laughs> That's it, man. Just a little bit so before crazy. time. So crazy, man. 
you know, I think this tour is really going to give fans a treat, man. I mean, to be able to see you singing those songs once again. I mean, me personally, I'm all about seeing the original singer live. I mean, you know, I know bands split up and they go their own way, but if the singer's alive, I'd rather go see him sing those songs. I feel when a band carries on without the singer, it's more of a glorified cover band than it is the actual band. I mean, if I choose, I'm going to choose the man who did it originally. Right. And that's, you know, this is as, as close as the original as you can get because Igor's drumming uh, and you get his his power drumming, which is amazing. And he's a very influential drummer for a lot of people through the years. You know, it's been very influential. And a lot of people want to hear them with the original vocals, man, you know? And that was a time, we was a, you know, we're part of that. And it's very important. And it did influence a lot of bands. Those records still influence bands right now. A lot of young bands, uh, stuff that we were even touring with, like Soulfly were touring with 200 Stab Wounds and they love those records, man. And uh, so many other bands, that, even bigger bands, like Gojira and uh, Slipknot, they all grew up with, with the Sepultura stuff, either Chaos AD or Roots, you know. Um, yeah, it's cool to see the influence. Uh, even guys like Dave Grohl, like, like Dave Grohl worships Roots, man. It's crazy, like to think that, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, to me, it's kind of insane that has reached so as far as that. But it's cool. I mean, I think this tour, specifically this era, might be my favorite uh, Sepultura era, just because it's just pure power. It's just raw, as just as raw as it gets. Energy, adrenaline. There's no <laughs> really no gimmicks. It's like one, one, two, three, four, bam! Right, right in your face for sure. From the from the get go, man, it's like it's a powerhouse, and we play like that. I try not to talk between songs too much. Try to one after the other, kind of like the Ramones, you know. Right, one, right. Two, three, four, da, 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 da. So give them what they want, in in and don't bush it. Don't beat around the bush. Just give them what they want fast and 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 hard <laughs> yeah definitely man i'm definitely excited to go ahead and check this tour out for sure i mean fans are going to be in for a real treat yeah it was it was really cool because we didn't i kind of even i was kind of surprised when we announced the tour because we didn't know if we were going to do or not and uh i remember my my wife is is she's my manager gloria yeah. she was talking to the booking agent the next thing I know, the booking agent is like, I got the dates and we're going to announce. And it was like, what? what that, how did that happen, man? I was, it was kind of fast, you know, and uh, it was, it, it was cool. I think it generated a lot of excitement, maybe because it was done like that, maybe because it was a little bit faster. Um, it was nothing that was announced a year ago. You know, a year ago, we didn't know we were doing this. So um, that's kind of like made it for, even more exciting i think when that came out it's like holy shit they actually doing it they're, they're they're playing these records and it's in a month from now you know right. it's coming it's gonna be here faster than you think man you know so uh, it's, it's pretty cool well i mean even like you said i mean it's you and your brother so this is gonna give the fans an opportunity to see the secretary that they grew up with yeah because i mean really really the real sepulcher really started with me and Igor as kids, you know, like mm -hmm. together playing brother. It's really like, it, it's very similar to the Van Halen story. It's very similar to the Pantera story. Original, you know, the brothers, the brothers made it. Other people came in and something else was created, but the roots, the, the real original place of it is between me and Igor, you know, it was born from us. And, uh, and kind of, I think a lot of people, um so sometimes I, be, I think people forget that or try to try to uh cover that up and don't say that's not the case but it's it is you know it was born in our bedroom back in back when we were shitheads you know two two little brazilian shitheads troublemakers making metal you know we started this thing and uh and sepultura was the first band i had so it was my first band so it's kind of like, you know, like 
kind of like your first girlfriend type thing, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so it's very special, man. So, uh, and and uh, we do justice to, by them. I think we play them really, really good, as good as, it, as they can be played. And you're right. I think a lot of fans would, they like to hear the original style like this, you know, with the original voice, with the original drums, rather than something else, you know? So... Um, I'm excited for that. And I think judging by, we already did this tour in Europe and we did it in South America. I remember in South America, it was pandemonium, man. It was like somebody put me in a fucking time tunnel and it was, right. it was 1991. It was like fans in the airport with banners and shit, like screaming in the airport, like, 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 you know, Beatles type shit. Like what the fuck is going on here? You know, I didn't know this shit happened anymore, you know? And and that was going on, and and the shows were crazy, and the energy that these records uh, have is insane. The, the 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 raw power, the, the pure energy, like it's because it's song after song after song, it's relentless, man. It's like there's not there's not really room to breathe. It's like one after the other. By the time we play Primitive Future, which is the last track on Arise. We're spent. We're all fucking soaking <laughs> wet. And you're done. You're spent. You know, you left it all there, man. You know, which is the way to do it, man. You know, what's cool is seeing how excited you are talking about this tour and playing these songs again. You know, I mean, so not only is it going to be great for fans, but it sounds like it's great for you to go ahead and relive that moments and have some of those memories pop back up when you're playing. Yeah, because I, I think uh, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I'm a musician that can do that. So, and I think because the way, the way my career moves, is kind of like I have one foot on the future with new soul fly, go right. ahead and die, killer be kill. I love all those projects. So I'm going to do more of that. Um, so those are all new music. That's new creation, you know, but I have one foot in the past, which is like enjoying the fruits, man. You know, we worked real hard for those records and it would be a waste not to enjoy them, you know? So it's, I think it's more than, more than fair that we get to enjoy them with the fans. We get to all be part of this thing, call it nostalgic, whatever you, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But it definitely brings everybody together. And for another thing that's cool, a lot of kids come, will come to the show, like young kids that weren't even born when those records came out. Right. And they, and they get to see it, you know, and they get to be part of that because they were not here. So it's similar to me watching uh, Black Sabbath, you know? I was one year old when Sabbath came out. Now I was probably, you know, six years old when, when Sabbath was on his peak. Sabotage and Saba Bloody Saba. I was, I was probably, I didn't even like metal. I didn't like music. I was seven years old, just into soccer, you know? Right, right. Um, so, so when I got to finally see Sabbath, I was, I was crying and I had tears, you know? I was like, you know, this is amazing. And like goosebumps, man. Like right on the side of the stage, watching Tony Iommi and Ozzy and, and Geezer Butler. It was like crying, like, yes, this is, this is amazing. So I, I understand the feeling, man, you know? Um, so for a lot of, a lot of fans would be like that. I think, I think some of it, some of them even be like, like generations. I think the dad will come with the son. Right. Like showing us this, like, this is where I grow up with son. That's it. Right. For sure. Yeah. You get, you get a taste of my teenage years now tonight, you know, uh, this is what I was into it when, when I was making making you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's definitely cool. I mean, it'll be a, funny to see some of these parents that aren't, you know, they the kids wouldn't think that they're metalheads anymore. Go ahead and bring you out to a show and be like, "This is what I was all about when I was your age, man." Yeah, man, yeah, that's. I, I meet a lot of those parents, and sometimes it's cool. Some sometimes the dad is a Sepultura fan because it's more older, like us, you know. Right. And the kid would be a Soulfly fan, and I'll tell. I look at the dad. I go, "I hope you're teaching him about." old sepultura stuff that's it man for yeah because sure. he's got to know where all that came from because without that there's no soul fly you know mm -hmm. as much as the kid loves soul fly uh without some without that stuff we we i wouldn't be here 
uh, doing social. I wouldn't even be here talking to you. And I think a record like Beneath the Remains is actually the starting point. This is the, that was like the record, like make it or break it record for us. Because if you would have made a shitty record, that's it. We would go back to Brazil to live in obscurity forever. <laughs> you know? sure. None of this would have happened, man. So that was that had to be a good record. It had to. It's like it. it's like do or die, man. You know, it was like, you know, some it's, it's like yeah, like the like like a gambling, like casino. You have like one roll of the dice. This is this is your dice. This is your chance, man. And we made the best of what we could with that time. And I'm super proud of the record. Still today, I think it's stands the test of time. It's killer. It's uh it's raw, it's brutal, it's honest. Most important, it's very honest. Right, those, man. Those, sure. are, those are honest records, man. You know, they don't bullshit. It's like what, what you see is what you get type of records. And uh, I love that, man. It's like really playing, everybody playing the instruments. Uh, and and it's, uh, if I'm being totally honest, it's just fun to play that stuff, you know? Um, it's, it's great to, to remember the past. It's great to pay homage. But really, at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying it, you're not having fun with it, don't fucking do it, man. That's and it, man. and I am totally, totally enjoying it. I, I can't wait for the rehearsal to start. We're going to start rehearsing really soon. and Because that shit needs rehearsal. Man. You can't yeah, just... right? <laughs> yeah. That stuff is hard, man. You know, it's like a lot of riffs in there, man. A lot of intricate shit. It's like... Yeah, you gotta you gotta get the get the blade really really tight, but uh, it's gonna be cool. I'm 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 super 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 excited, super happy that we're doing this, and uh, and of course, there's a lot of like when we announced the tour, I saw a lot of cities got pissed off. Like, like this, you're not coming to my city. Fuck, fuck you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> which always happens. You know, you cannot please everybody. Uh, but you know, eventually we'll do another one. We we'll do another run and try to cover some other cities. But for the moment, it's five weeks, and uh, hopefully, we're going to be announcing the opening bands to by next week. I think we have to, we're trying to get some really cool opening bands for the tour, and uh, that should be also a really big part of the the whole experience. You know, that's awesome, man. You know, like I said, it's cool to see you excited about doing this. Sometimes you see bands that go ahead and play their earlier stuff, and you could tell they're just doing it just for a paycheck or to sell some tickets. I mean, you truly sound excited to go ahead and play this music once again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really, and and it, and it was, and it's, it's kind of hard because a lot of time I like that stuff a lot. You know, I grew up with, and a lot of times I was tempted to. Um, add a couple of Sepultura tracks into the Soulfly set list, but I ended up not doing it. I kept it separate, you know? Right. So Soulfly was Soulfly. It was all Soulfly songs. And a lot of fans liked that. A lot of fans were really happy with that because it was like, it's a separate thing, you know? Um, and then now I get to really play everything, all those songs that I really miss playing, I get to really go and play them, you know? So, um, there is definitely uh, definitely a degree of uh, the other thing is like um, you know being one of the few survivor brothers in metal you know because me and Igor are few there's not many of us left you know right. like Alex Van Halen and uh, you know Eddie and Alex Eddie die and and Diamond Vinny is gone you know uh, I kind of look at that as it being very special that me and Igor are still here and are able to play. We don't know how long we're going to be here for, I, you know, but right now we're both here. Let's do this, man. You know, like while we're here, because you, you just don't know what the future holds, man. You know, definitely. Man. Now, when you left Sepultura, were you surprised about how many big names came out to try and take your place? Not not that surprise. In fact, I think uh, I thought one of those guys would probably would have would have got it. You know, um, uh, I can't remember at that time, but I, I think even somebody even mentioned uh, 
uh, Mike Patton was even somebody that they that they mentioned that might would have joined them, uh, or Rob Flynn. Uh, even I remember it was like another name, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it was it was a hard time for me, man. You know, it was like because Sepultura was the band I like. My first girlfriend was my first love. You know, right. um, it was very hard. So when I first quit from them, I went into total darkness depression i was only like drinking and drugging myself i hit bottom you know i was in the in the bottom of the pit and little by little with the right people around me you know was was like people pulling me back to life and showing me encouraging me to continue and it was great like people like gloria and uh even the label at the time roadrunner was like monty was like come on max you can do this i even had a meeting with ozzy man it was like i went to ozzy's house that's what i heard man i heard you went fucking, to ozzy's house for sure which is fucking crazy if you would have told the teenage max you're gonna you know you're gonna have a band you guys are gonna break up and Oz is gonna give you advice on the, on, on a new band Shut up, man. Right. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. <laughs> Stop messing with my head. But I know it, it did happen and it was awesome. And it was cool to hear because he's been through that, man, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It and, was and, uh, and he felt a lot like me, betrayed, uh, kind of like kick into the, kick, kick, kick into, in, in, into the, uh, the hallway by yourself, you know, kind of like kick into the gutter, you know, Ozzy felt all those things. So he, he knew what he was talking about. It's like, he, he told me like, it's up to you to get your back on your feet and show the world that you have it, what it takes, you know, kind of like, you don't need them. It's just kind of like a, it was, it was like a, like a Rocky moment, man. Yeah, go, gotta, gotta go do it, you know? Uh, but it was coming from me meant a lot. And, that's when I first started Soulfly, man. You know, I got to end up recording with the Deftones first. I did a song called Head Up on right. the, around the fur record. And then I created the, the first Soulfly record, which a lot of people like this record a lot. It's one of those unique kind of records. I don't think I ever going to make a record like that. It was such a weird place. Um, I wrote about it at that time was, there was a, it's a, there's a song called No Hope, No Fear which was exactly how I was feeling. I had no hope. So I, I really had no fear. It's like the weirdest place you can be is that, is the no hope, no fear place. Cause it's like, you give zero fucks about anything. Right. You know, it's like, cause normally as a, as an artist and as musicians, we are very careful. We very careful about what we say, what we do about the music. At that time, I was like, fuck it all. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I die today, man. You know, uh, and I made the record with that state of mind. So that's very crazy to make records with that psychic. I think it's kind of dangerous even. <laughs> but the record itself came out really good, man. You know, and, and I think a lot of people like the, the, the raw energy that the record has. It's a unique energy. Um, and it did have a couple of crazy things. I remember we buried the tapes on the ground because it was the studio was it was native uh, a graveyard about three hundred years ago. They bury a bunch of native Native Americans there. So I heard about that. So I wanted to like connect it with that. So I buried right. the tapes. It was back in the analog days, so you still have the big tapes, you know? Uh -huh. So we had shovels, and we we dig these big holes, and we put the tapes in it and, and bury them. And then the next day, we unbury them and send them to Andy Wallace, full of mud in the plastic and mud. And he called Gloria, like, why is there mud? There's like, there's this shit's all dirty and fucked up. <laughs> and it's like, well, because, uh, yeah, Max decided to bury the tapes. <laughs> to capture the earth that's it man and it, it worked man the record went gold you know it was crazy it was back then when we still sold records huh? and that's another another thing from the past that uh 
a lot of us don't don't get to enjoy anymore. So now that sounds like the best therapy that you could ever do right there is just go ahead and put your heart and soul into to making an amazing project like you did. Yeah, it was kind of like I didn't really have a choice. It was like this is it. That's that's you can either do that or quit entirely and don't do anything else, you know. So but it was it was good. Definitely making making the record was definitely a good uh, good therapy for it. Now, was there ever a time where you was like, fuck those guys? This is my band. I created it. This is my name. And just take Sepulterra as your own? No, it was kind of, it was a bit confusing because when I left, I was just fed up with it. And I left the name with, with, with my brother, actually. And he was still in the band. So he continued uh, Sepultura without me, you know? Mm -hmm. I just, I was just done with it, man. I just had too many... Uh, disappointments you know heart my heart was broken i was like done i'm out of it man fuck this you know and uh so i never thought of it i mean even though it was it, it is my name was my band i could have just could have just fired up fired the guy but it was it was more complicated than that a lot of people don't understand the the technologies of it it's like it's it was really a complicated time uh everything kind of worked out man worked out good I mean, like, I don't care that there, there's another band out there with, with that name. I think those records are uh, unique and special. And it was a special time. And we made special music. And um, they will never be like, uh, those, those records will never get, will get old. And they'll never get outdated. They're, they're timeless, you know? Right. So, sure. yeah, and I got to do other things. There's stuff that I do with Soulfly I couldn't really do with Sepultura. So it all worked I, out. I, I can't complain. It worked out, you know. I'm sorry, man. I got another interview calling. Uh, all right, man. Well, it was a, a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, before I let you go, where can fans go and get tickets, find more about the new albums, everything like that? Is there a one-stop shop, or does everything have its own separate website? Yeah, different different websites, but uh, I think I'm not too big on on social media myself. I don't even have a phone, but I think you can find stuff on Cavalera Conspiracy Instagram, um, Gloria Cavalera Facebook has a lot of information. Um, Soulfly Tribe, I think there's they're also going to be talking about this tour, but uh, yeah. Just uh, just check out those and hopefully other other places will pop up, you know. Cool. All right, man. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I'm glad to see that you're doing well. I can't wait to hear the new Soulfly album. I hope I get a chance to catch you on this new tour playing them classic hits. All right, my brother. Good talking to you, man. Take care, man. Yeah, be safe.